Okay, so uh, I'm preparing for the comet that's uh, going to be visible here in a few days. And uh, I only have a couple of days that I get a chance to go out. And the first morning will be the morning of the 29th. So I opened up Stellarium and I loaded the uh, comet in the, uh, in the app here. And as you can see, I've got my date and my time set for uh, 929 and currently it's uh, 523 uh, in the morning here. Uh, and the main reason I wanted to do this is because I wanted to figure out the framing uh, of how to rotate my, my uh, sensor on the camera. And uh, so I was looking here and I noticed, you know, I can use the Orbitals plug-in in Nina. Uh, the Orbitals plug-in in Nina works great. Um, if I go over here, you can update the comment list here, punch in the one you're looking for, and it'll show it. But it only shows it for like the current time, for uh, today's the 20th. Um, I don't know how to change this to show me the uh, timing and positions for a date in the future. It just shows the current time. Um, so what I, what I decided to do was open up Stellarium, find the comet on the date that I want to image it, watch the Starlink satellites go by. Is it a Starlink? Oh no, look at that. See, they're not all Starlinks. That one happens to be though. Uh, but yeah, watch the, um, watch the comet, give me an idea of where in the sky it's going to be rising. So it's going to be a, just a little south of east. So uh, I can pick out a good horizon uh, where I'm going to have to travel to a dark site with a low horizon to the, uh, to the east in order to image this scope. Um, but anyway, getting back to my framing here, I decided, well, let me look and see what other stars are around the field of view because orbitals will just put the comet directly in the center of the frame, sort of like what you're seeing here when I lock onto it with uh, Stellarium, just like if I lock onto one of these other objects, it centers up. So, uh, so orbitals is great for getting it in the field of view, but not so much, not so much great for framing the subject what because what I want to do is I want to make sure that I have as much of this tail as possible so what I did was I set it up like this and I noticed that I've got a couple little small uh, galaxies here so this is IC 659 this is IC 657 and this is IC 630 over here there's no little tiny uh, galaxies inside the frame. And by the way, speaking of the frame, this is the frame with my Stellar View 70, uh, which is about a 336 millimeter focal length. And this is using the uh, 2600 ZWO, uh, which is an APS-C size sensor. So this gives me the frame. Uh, it's quite possible that the uh, tail is gonna be this large. And if that's the case, I'm just simply not going to be able to get it all. Um, but I'm kind of hoping that, uh, I'm kind of hoping it is actually that uh, huge and, and prominent and, and some people with some wider angle lenses than myself are, are able to capture the whole thing. I'll just go for the close up here. But anyway, getting back to the uh, three galaxies here that kind of frame up my frame here. Uh, if we go into Stellarium, and what I did was I called up IC659, which was one of those three, and did the framing on it. So now we see IC659 here, IC657 here, and IC630. So those are the three galaxies. So now I know that my framing, if we go back to this shot here, so with, with those two uh, smaller galaxies framed just off to the side here, and this one just off to the bottom edge here, going back to this shot here, you can see that's almost exactly the same framing here. So I know that that is, that is the way I wanna have my sensor oriented. Uh, so what I'll do is I will save these coordinates and and add this to a target sequence. Uh, the stellar view doesn't have a rotator on, so I'll just use the manual rotator to get me into uh, this position here. 
and I should be good to go for the 29th. And after I'm done setting up the uh, sequence here, uh, I will uh, probably set up one for October 2nd as well, because that's going to be my only other uh, day or only other early morning that I'm going to get a chance to uh, to get out and uh, try to image this this uh, comet. Going back to stellar view, I can see that if I have a perfect horizon, the comet is going to rise at about what time? Around 5.18 and then what time will we be getting into the dawn light? Probably about right there. So 5.18 to 5.44. So I've got less than 30 minutes to uh, gather the data that I need on this. So I'm going to plan on 30 second subs to uh, maximize the number of subs. And uh, I'm going to be using my color camera so I don't have to worry about switching filters. I mean, I will obviously, I will keep shooting until even later, but whether whether any of these frames will be useful, that's another story. So we'll see if anything else, if nothing else, I will uh, keep shooting until it's no longer visible or my subs are completely overexposed and I'll just make a little time lapse out of the, out of the video. Um, but yeah, that's my plan. Always be prepared, plan ahead for uh, an object like this when you only have 30 minutes to capture the data. You want to make sure that you're not fiddling around with, you know, rotating sensors or, or doing anything, uh, you know, crazy like that the morning of. You want to you want to kind of be all set well in advance. Okay, guys, so I wish you luck, and I'm going to leave you with a little uh, image and a little short video time lapse of the last good comet that I photographed. This is uh, Comet C2023 P1 Nishimura, and this was captured uh, just a little more than a year ago. So, enjoy. <laughs>